Which of these could be the output for a dynamo? A dynamo is a direct current source, so the current is only in one direction. This shows current going in both directions, one way around the circuit, other way around the circuit, one way around the circuit, other way around the circuit. All the others do the same, uh, except for this one stays on one side of the circuit, so it has to be this one. Because this above this line uh, is positive, below is negative. So positive means one flow in one direction, negative means flow in another direction, clockwise and anti-clockwise anti and clockwise. Figure 17 shows the output from a battery. Explain why a transformer will not work with the input current as shown in figure 17. Well, transformers do not work with a direct current source, but why? Basically, you need a changing current, so a current that flows in one direction and the other direction to induce a changing magnetic field. So this is how a transformer works with an AC source. The current flows around one direction, around the wire, and that causes a magnetic field in the wire to be in one direction. Then it changes to the other direction. So you get a magnetic field reversing in the wire, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards. That changes the magnetic field or the direction of the magnetic field in the coil. So it goes north here, then here, it reverses. Magne mag uh, domains line up one way, then the other way, one way, then the other way. And what, when that happens, that feeds around to this side, one way, then the other way, one way, then the other way. And there, that has an impact on the electrons in the wire, causing to move one way, then the other way. So you get an alternating current in the second coil being induced. What happens here, if you do, do direct current, what would happen is all the electrons move in one direction, and then the magnetic field moves in one direction and then the whole system stops the field lines stop cutting the wire you see if they st if they stabilize in one direction you don't get any sweeping of electrons it stops this sweeping process which generates the electric current you have to get the field lines reversing to get the sweeping of electrons which is why there's no current with dc anyway how do you explain this in nice tidy two marks a changing current is needed to induce a changing magnetic field. So that's all we're saying here. So you need a, a changing magnetic field to get transformers working, and a changing current is needed to induce that changing magnetic field. Okay. A transformer has 30 turns on its primary coil and 150 turns on its secondary coil. A potential difference of 25 volts is applied across the primary coil. Calculate the potential difference across the secondary coil. Use an equation selected from the list of equations at the end of this paper. Always quite nice to do a simple diagram to draw these out to see what's going on. So we know we've got a primary coil here and we've got a secondary coil here. Um, so I would just say, right, let's, what are the key characteristics? So we know 25 volts is coming in and we know 30 turns around it. We know on the other one we've got 150 turns, but what we want to work out is what's the voltage output here. That's what we're trying to work out. So now we use the appropriate equation that is easy to find. There's only one which relates to transformers. Voltage across primary divided by voltage across secondary will equal uh, number of turns in primary divided by number of turns in secondary. In other words, it's a ratio. Um, so we know that this is our basically our situation at the moment. We know 25 vol uh, volts uh, for the primary, but we don't know secondary. We know 30 turns for primary and um, 150 turns for the secondary. If it's easier, what you can do is flip it the other way around so you get a nice tidy division. You can do that because it's a ratio. As long as you do the same to both sides, it's fine. So 150 divided by 30 will is equal to whatever this is divided by 25. So what we do is we work out the one we can first. 150 divided by 30 is 5. In other words, this is reduced by a factor of 5. So this is reduced by a factor of 5. So if that's the case, to get back, you just multiply this 5 by 5 to increase this by a factor of 5. So the answer should be 125. That's it. Really nice and easy. Remember the methods. Work out the one you can first. Work out the factor um, it's been sort of increased or decreased by, and then apply that to the other one. High voltage transmission cables and transformers are used in the national grid. Explain how using high voltage transmission cables and transformers allows the distribution of electrical power around the United Kingdom to be as efficient as possible. Refer to the following equations in your answer. P equals I squared times R, VP times IP equals VS times IS. So ultimately the the problems with uh, delivering electrical power is power is voltage times current and if you transmit electrical power with a very high current which is one way you could do it uh, the the wires heat up so much the cables heat up so much that a lot of that electrical power the energy in 
the electrons is transferred to the environment as heat and it's just wasted. You can reduce this significantly by boosting voltage instead, so the push, but keeping the flow low, the current flow. So the electrons move slower, but they're pushed, more of them are pushed along. And that allows electricity to move much, much, much further without and, 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 and reduce heat loss. So how do we explain this using these formulae? Well, firstly, the problem is long transmission wires, um, and you do need to talk about the problem first, long transmission wires have resistance. Thermal energy is dissipated in transmission wires. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. So you get energy lost or uh, as, as heat. So dissipated means basically is spread out to the environment. And this, uh, re this is, reduces the potential difference at the destination. So there's less voltage, less energy at the destination. That's the problem. And this results in power loss because power is voltage times current. Now, this one's a bit tricky. It's saying um, this equation here tells us that heat energy wasted due to electrical resistance is equal to the square of the current. In other words, if you think about it, it P divided by I squared equals resistance. So the greater the current, you're reducing the power significantly um, because you square the current. So increasing current greatly increases the resistance. That's the problem, which is why it's very inefficient. So the solution is use a step up transformer to increase the voltage. And this keeps current low to increase overall power. So power loss is smaller. You must use a step-up transformer for this. Now, the reason this works is because you need to remember that Vp times Ip equals power. Voltage times current is power. So if Vp times Ip, so the input voltage and current, equals the output voltage and current, if they're related, then if you increase the voltage here, you'll increase the power output as well. So that's how you tie in the second equation. Um, yeah, so voltage times current is power. And power input is equal to or proportional to power output. It's the same as power output. So if you increase the voltage input, you'll increase the power uh, voltage output, which increases the power output. So that's how transformers work. Um, step-down transformers are used to lower voltage to safe levels. So step-down transformers occur here before we get to our home. Step-up transformers boost voltage before the national grid step-down transformers afterwards um, for consumers. And consumer wires are shorter, so power loss less of an issue. So obviously here you're transporting um, electricity over great distances here much shorter. So the shorter the wires, the less resistance, less issue. So the point is you do not need to boost um, voltage to, 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 to um, deliver power over great distances.